Welcome back everyone to our next video in the Thinkorswim tutorial series. In the last video we covered how to place really simple stock orders, but in this one we're going to go over how to place advanced orders, also known as conditional orders. So for those of you watching who are unfamiliar, an advanced order basically just means you want more than one thing to happen. So instead of just buying the stock, I might want to automatically put out a profit taking order, or a stop loss order, or maybe even a mixture of the two. That's where the advance order is going to come in, and it really makes it so we can kind of set things and maybe walk away for a bit. We don't have to watch things quite as closely, but it can be a little bit complicated if you've never done it before. Let's go ahead and begin by doing this on something I already hold in this account. So in this account up here, we can see I currently have INTC. I've got 100 shares of it. We can see to the right, I originally paid $52.50 for it, and it's currently $22.25. So I'm down quite a bit since buying it. Let's just say for this example, I want to put out an order to say, if it ever goes back up to 50, I just want to get out of this thing and try and recoup the majority of what I lost earlier. But also if it continues to fall, and if it ever falls below 20 bucks, I just want to exit automatically because I don't want to lose any more money. So to do that, what we're going to do is come over here to Intel, simply right click on it, we're going to come down below where it says create a closing order, which is what we want to do. But instead of us clicking on the simple option to just create a limit order or a simple order to place a stop order on this position, I'm instead going to use the one pre-made down here called with OCO bracket. From there, you're going to see that two separate lines are created down here at the bottom of the screen. And by the way, for those of you who are not familiar with what an OCO order is, it means one cancels the other. So looking down here at these two separate lines, these two separate sell tickets, only one of them can ever fill. The first one up here to sell 100 shares of INTC is a limit order, and this is going to be acting as my profit-taking order. So the first thing I'm going to say is if Intel ever goes back up to 50, I want to sell it. But also, if it ever drops below 20, so right down here where my stop is at, I'm going to go ahead and adjust that to 20, I also want to get out. So again, I'm either saying if it goes up to 50, sell it, or if it goes down to 20, sell it. And I also want this to be good until canceled. So I'm going to go ahead and change these both to GTC. And that just means these orders are going to go out every single day until they fill. Now that I've set that, we'll just come over here and hit confirm and send. Make sure everything looks right in the order confirmation, which it does. Right at the top, I'm selling 100 if it ever hits 50, or I'm stopping myself out if it hits 20. And now that I'm happy with that, we'll just come down below and hit send. With those orders placed, if I were to go back up to my monitor page and open up the working order section, you can now see both of those orders up here at the top of the screen. So at the top, again, is my order, in this case, to stop me out if it falls below 20. And then this bottom one is my limit order to sell it if it ever hits 50. And just like any other active orders on here, if I wanted to cancel or edit one of these, all I have to do is right click on the one I want to change, then hit cancel to outright cancel it, cancel OC group to cancel the entire thing, both orders, or come down here, cancel slash replace if I just wanted to edit my stop in this case. Now, besides here on the monitor page, if I go ahead and head over to the charts, We'll also be able to see it on here as well. It's just with the time frame I've got selected makes it a little more difficult. But now looking here at a yearly chart, you can see my stop is down here at 20. My limit order is up here at 50. Just like with the standard orders we talked about in the last video, I could also edit these by simply dragging them where I want to move them. So in this case, if I wanted to move it down to roughly $40, I'll move it down here. I'll let go. And now down in the order confirmation, it's just making sure that I truly want to move it down to $40.05, which I do. So once I hit send, that previous order has now been canceled, but I still have my stop at 20 and now my limit order at 40. Hey everyone, sorry to interrupt the video, but I just finished working on the beta of my very own trading journal. So those of you active traders out there, especially those of you who trade options, might find this especially useful. Here you're going to be able to quickly identify your performance by strategy, see a calendar of your daily profits and losses, and overall just create more detailed reports based on any of your filtered criteria. So check it out using the link below or head over to traderlog.io to give it a try for free for 7 days and use the code traderlog50 for 50% off. 
But enough of that, let's get back to the video. But in this next example, let's assume we don't even have it yet. So for this next one, let's say I wanted to place a trade on Tesla. We'll go ahead and pull up Tesla here. And the first thing I want to show you is the order template that we just used is actually pre-made for everyone in here. So if we wanted to use the pre-made templates, we're going to come up here to the top where it says what Tesla last traded for, 216.69. From there, we're going to see the standard buy and sell buttons, which again, we talked about in the last video. Clicking those are going to create a very simple buy ticket or sell ticket. But what we want to do is use one of the templates that are pre-made for us. So coming down here to where it says buy custom and sell custom, this is where either Thinkorswim's templates are going to be, so these three right here, or if later down the line you create your own templates and save them, they'll appear here as well. So just as a quick example, let's say we wanted to buy Tesla if it ever dropped down to 200, and then we automatically wanted to put a 5% trailing stop on it. Now in that example, because I don't have a profit target on it, I just want to let it run, I'm not going to use the with OCO bracket because that would create both sides of it. It would create the profit taking order and the stop. All I'm instead going to do is click on the one that says with a stop. You'll then see the two orders get listed out down here below. The first one, the green line to buy the 100 shares, this is just going to be the normal buy ticket. So right here, we're going to first say we want to buy 100 shares of Tesla if it drops down to 200. So exactly what I said originally. And then we're saying, once I buy these 100 shares for $200 a piece, I then want my stop to go out there. If you remember back, I said I wanted this to be a trailing stop. So I'm going to come over here to where it says stop, change this to trailing stop. And I believe I said I wanted this to be 5% below whatever I buy it for. So in this case, because this little plus or minus is right here, that actually means dollars and cents. So for us to flip this over to percentages, I'm going to go ahead and click on that button two times. Then I'm going to change this number over here to negative 5%. So as soon as I buy these 100 shares for $200 a piece, I then want a trailing stop to go out there and always follow behind it by 5%. I'm going to go ahead and leave this opening order set as a day order only, but I'm going to change this time and force for the second order to good until canceled. So it goes out every single day. And because I might actually use this template quite frequently, this might be something I do all the time. If I want to save it, I'm going to hit this little floppy disk icon right here. That'll then automatically generate some crazy name up here. So let's go ahead and get rid of this huge name because I'm never going to remember what this is doing. And I'm instead going to name it 5% trail, then hit save. So now that I did that and I saved this as a template, I can actually reuse it anytime I want on any stock I want. So even if we were to flip the symbol, and let's say we flip it over to Google here, and I were to come back up to the price again, come back down to buy custom, which remember that's where all the templates are gonna be stored. You can actually see the new one I just created over here on the right, which if I click on that, you'll see it actually pre-fills everything exactly how I had it saved. So right here, we're buying 100 shares of Google. It is going to default to the current price, 166.27. But then it's saying once this buy order fills, my trailing stop is going to go out there 5% below. So these templates can actually be super useful for you and save you a ton of time. But this is going to be the ones that are kind of pre-made for you or the ones that you can kind of reuse as many times as you want. If you instead want to make this on your own, kind of one step at a time, what we're going to do is go ahead and delete this out of here. And sticking with Google, I'm going to come back up here to the top where the current price is at, 166.27. And I'm going to build out a simple buy order, just saying I want to buy 50 shares of the stock. So once I hit buy, we've got the order ticket down here. And I'm simply going to adjust the quantity down to 50 instead of 100. Let's also say I didn't want to buy it at 166, the current price. I'm going to go ahead and drop that down to 160. And if this was all I wanted to do, if I just wanted to buy 50 shares of Google, I would just hit confirm and send in the lower right-hand corner. But if I instead wanted to place other orders along with this, or have this order trigger other orders to go out there, what I need to do is come down to the lower left-hand corner, where it currently says single order. And if you open that up, you're going to see a list of all of the different advanced order types available to you. Now, I can explain all of these, but if I'm being honest with you, the only two that I actually see you use frequently is going to be the first trigger sequence, 
and the first trigger's OCL. Beginning with that first trigger sequence, that simply means that I want this order to trigger the second order, and then the second order to trigger the third order, and the third order to trigger the fourth order, and so on. So let's just say if this order were to fill, if I bought 50 shares of Google at 160, let's say I wanted to then sell these 50 shares if it ever goes up to 165. Now I could come up here to the top, click on the price and hit sell. That's one way to do it. But since I've already got things pre-made down here at the bottom, another thing I could do is simply right click anywhere on this green line and then come down here below and hit create opposite order. So now at the top, I've got my first order to buy 50 shares of Google at 160. Then I want to sell those 50 if it ever hits 165. And remember, this sell order is not going to be submitted until the buy order fills. And let's also say that after both of these trades happen, I basically just want this to continue. I want it to keep happening. So what I could do is go ahead and right click on this green line again. But this time, instead of creating an opposite order, I want to duplicate it because I then want to buy another 50 shares. Then once I buy those shares again at 160, I want to sell them again at 165. So you can see I just duplicated that sell order again. Now, technically, I could actually do this up until eight orders. So until there's eight individual orders here, we could keep this chain going, basically saying every time Google drops to 160, buy it. Every time it goes back up to 165, sell it. But that'll be our first example. Again, first trigger sequence, meaning the first order triggers the second. Second triggers the third. Third triggers the fourth, and so on. Now, besides that, if we go ahead and delete this out of here, let's go ahead and start over again. We'll build out another simple buy ticket on Google. If I instead wanted to place this order to buy 100 shares at Google and then automatically put out my profit-taking order at 165, but also along with it, put in a stop at 10% below whatever I buy it for, that's going to be an example of first trigger's OCO. And remember back to just a minute ago, that simply means the first order once it fills is going to put out an OCO bracket order, where one cancels the other. So to do that, the first thing we're going to do is come down here below and change this from first trigger sequence over to first trigger's OCO. Then I'm going to go ahead and create an ops order of this green line here. It's so right here. We're creating our sell tickets. And remember, they are both sell tickets. The only thing is the first sell ticket is going to be our profit taking order. Remember, we want to buy Google if it drops down to 160 here. And then my stop is actually going to be 10% below what we bought it for. So first off, I'll go ahead and change this from a limit order to a stop order. And after that, the next thing I could do is actually just type in a 10% offset. So, I mean, I could take 10% of 160, just type in that number there. But if I do not want to do that math in my head, I could also just come over here where it says manual. Go ahead and change that to trigger right here. And now instead of actually having to do the math myself, I can just have it calculate that offset for me. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to a negative 10% offset here. And now looking at the order we just created, we've got an opening order to buy 100 shares of Google at 160, which if it fills, will then put out these two orders. Both are going to be working simultaneously, either to sell it for a $5 profit or stop me out if I lose 10% on it. Whichever of these two sell orders fills first, the other one is going to be automatically canceled. So don't worry, just because we've got two sell tickets here to sell 100 shares each doesn't mean we're going to go short by doing this. Whichever one fills first, the other one gets canceled. Now, if you want to see what this actually looks like on a chart, if we come down here and hit confirm and send and send, you can now see all three of those orders right here. We could always adjust them by dragging them up or down. We could right click and cancel order or cancel slash replace, but that's pretty much the gist of it. After this, you should feel comfortable placing advance orders on stock, on futures, on Forex. This will even apply to options. And for those of you who are still looking to learn more, and especially for you options traders watching, don't worry. In the next video, we're going to discuss the option chain and how to place option trades within Thinkorswim. Click the video below to take a look, and I'll see you there.